Well, folks, those are the tools of the day. Crosscut saw I've been working on refurbishing, sharpening, and resetting the teeth. And this is a straight haft, about 36 inch. That's a uh, true temper, flint edge, Kelly Works. About a probably three pound, three and a half pound head. And of course, I'll uh, stand by a standing water bottle there. Got to keep hydrated on a day like today. This old saw. Picked it up at a flea market. It's in pretty rough shape when I first got it. Had to reset all the teeth. Take about a ton of rust off of it. Linseed oil at the handle. Put a new uh, grab handle on it. And got it ready to go but not cutting some poles. And I'll show you what the poles have been cutting. This is the tarp that we've been prototyping. 9x9, 10 by 10 canvas, waterproof, mildew proof. We've seen it set up as a lean to before. Now it's set up as a uh, plow point, or I guess that's what you'd call it, diamond fly type deal. Nice breezy day. Wind's kind of catching it, but there is absolutely a ton of room in there. Enough room for two guys and all their gear, no problem. Keep you in the dry all day long, all night long. I don't have it fully staked out. I'm using the toggle thing again, as you can see here. Toggled it up from that tie right there. Got a toggle right there. Like I said, I didn't stake it out tremendously. Just wanted to get it out, do a new configuration with it. You see that pole a couple feet longer than what the actual tarp is. A really nice setup. I'll back up a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Stretched pretty tight. Seems like it uh, turned some water pretty decent. Don't think we'd have any trouble with it anyways, being as it's waterproof. Like I said, didn't take it down just only in a couple places if I was gonna make it a little bit more of a permanent camp which I'm thinking about doing I'd probably use these other two toggle points right there and right there that's the center of the tarp actually to uh, fasten it down just a little bit more possibly even pull a couple of guys out on these state on these edges here just get a good pull on that, pull them out tight if I was worried about the weather. The peak of it is probably right at about four and a half foot, somewhere around in there. That's what you're looking at right here. So you could actually sit in here and work inside out of the weather when it was inclement. Like I said, it didn't bring a lot of gear out today. Just going out to uh, try this old saw. Uh, See how it was going to work out. I'm going to work up a little bit of wood for the camp. I wanted you to see the tools for the day. I'll get a few shots of this saw in action. It's a pretty good old saw. I guess I got it right on the two sharpening and setting the rakers. As you can see, I've got a little bit of sawdust already caught on it. Been putting it through its paces. Went and saw these here, poles, and then a few other odds and ends items that I was sawing in another part of the camp. But I'm gonna try and get some wood going. Possibly start a fire. I don't know if I will today or not. It's doggone nice. Been just drinking water. Might wait until the evening it cools off. Might put me on a pot of coffee. Okay, fellas. 
this is my vice tree. It's going to be my saw butt. Um, basically, all I'm talking about for a vice or a saw buck is right down in between here. You can see that narrow space. I can take a piece of wood, wedge it down in there, and leave it stick out either this way or on this side over here, and work with some saw. So we'll see if we can get something going here. Alright, I want to talk a little bit about safety before we start anything. <clears throat> I've noticed uh, quite a few accidents that get posted on different sites with axes and saws and different things. And, uh, you know, anything that you do out in the woods, you're kind of on your own hook as far as taking care of yourself. And so you want to make sure that when you're doing anything, when it comes to using a sharp device, whether it's just a knife or a saw or an axe or a hatchet, anything like that, just be aware of what you're doing. Make sure your surroundings where your feet are at are clean and clear of trip hazards. Always get a decent set of gloves. They don't have to necessarily be leather, but something that's going to protect your hand in case you would brush it on a sharp part of one of your tools. Um, as far as safety glasses go, you know, a lot of guys wear glasses. That's kind of up to you. I would recommend them if you were doing a lot of axe work where there's a lot of debris flying up in the air. Now with a saw like this, you're going to see that there's not a lot of debris <laughs> flying anywhere. But this, the reason I brought this saw out and I refurbed this saw is if you're looking at making a little bit more of a permanent camp, you know, something you're going to be at just about every weekend, maybe throughout the year, or even just through the summer or something, it's nice to have something like that to process some firewood, you know. I mean, it's good to have firewood that you can just pick up off the ground, you know, or squall wood or whatever, but, you know, a short saw, great if you're packing in for some distance. But if you've got somewhat permanent camp and you've got a place to keep it or you've got a way to bring it in with you, Bring a bigger saw, you know, a big bow saw, something like that. Make this process in firewood business as easy as possible because then you get to enjoy your quiet time after the work's done. Anyway, I'm going to get this saw fired up here and show you that I guess I learned a little bit of something as I was working on this and learning how to set the teeth and file the teeth and file the rakers. Seems like it does a pretty good job. Now, the two style on this is for hardwood. Of course, I'm in northern Indiana, all hardwood forest for the most part. Um, it's really made, or the idea behind the saw was probably to cut when it was a little on the green side and process your wood during the summer so that by the time fall got around to it, it was already dry. You know? But this here, this has already been down for quite a while. so. You know, I don't know what it looks like. It's got some dirt out here on the end, so I'm going to avoid that. It kind of stuck into the ground when it hit the ground. I'll stay up in here and process my first piece. It'll still burn. I just don't want to get my teeth on that. One piece down. Now that's really dry wood. And you'll notice that when I first started the piece, I kept my hand up here on the grab handle. Now this handle is made to where if you bring a buddy along on this saw, it has another hole right down here. Move this handle up here, and then it becomes your buddy's handle. But no, in all seriousness, I kept my hand up here until I got that saw 
started in a good cut. I didn't want my hand down here because if I go like this, it could jump and cut your hand, you know, right through the glove. There's no doubt about that. And then at the very end of my cut, if you've seen, I slowed down. Usually when you're sawing for like finished carpentry and that type of stuff, when you get down to the very end of your cut with a handsaw, you slow down. It just keeps it under control better so that the saw doesn't catch and the wood flip. You know, if you don't have a steel toe shoe on or something, hey, a piece of wood like that, drop it on your toe, it's going to hurt. And guys, I'm not really pushing down on this saw. I'm just bragging it back and forth and letting the teeth do the work for me. Because if it's sharp and the set in the teeth are right and the rakers are right, this saw will cut. And granted, it's not a fast process, but it will cut for you. You only have to move it back and forth. The weight of the saw should be what's cutting into the actual wood. See what I'm saying about the tree vise? Works pretty good. Yeah, it wants to move up and down a little bit, but once you get your turf started, you can grab a hold of this, keep it kind of steady, keeps on going, not a problem. As far as wanting to share this with you, as far as the crosscut goes, and no, it's not a modern tool. No, it's not maybe real bushcrafty, but if you don't relish bringing a loud noisy chainsaw and you want to process some wood at a decent rate that right there is your alternative that's all i can say i think it works pretty good Something else you might ask, will this saw cut trees? Certainly it will. The poles that I cut for my plow point, those were live, live standing trees. And you know, on the green wood, that's still wet and sappy, it cuts really good. I mean, you have to be aware of where your weight is on your tree so you don't pinch your blade, but you know, it's really, this saw really was designed 
to work better in something that was green and not quite so hard. But hey, it's still processing firewood. I'm going to guess the age of this saw is probably somewhere around 70 years old, something like that. I don't think it worked much better the day it was bought. Seems to cut really good. Not having any trouble with it. And you know, this tree, I call it my vice tree or my saw buck. You know, this is pretty common out in the woods, but the reason I do this is to keep this up off the ground, keep it at a good working level. It's ergonomic, doesn't hurt your back. And it keeps all your saw and everything up out of the dirt. You know, makes it just a little easier to do your job and a little more enjoyable. I'm sure you're wondering why I brought a full-size axe when I'm only cutting stuff like this. But what I do is I go out through the woods and I look for stuff that's down, but it's up off the ground. Sometimes, now this piece wasn't, but sometimes you'll find some of this stuff and it's still attached to the tree. Well, if it's up this high, I don't want to go and try and saw something that's all snagged with the saw. That's where I'll take the axe and work at chopping it out in a safe manner so that I don't have that problem. But see now, I've got this about where I can't put it through anymore because all the branches are starting to go out on the other side of the tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to trim the branches on the other side, get it down to where it's even smaller and possibly work from that side for a little bit. How do I know this saw is sharp? Because when I cut this, I'm watching when I'm going if it's cutting straight. Now, if I didn't have the T set right on it, it would want to lead one way or the other as you're cutting down through the log. So I know that it's sharp and that the teeth are set evenly and everything's filed right because it does a straight cut. Okay guys, I'm gonna talk a little bit about axe safety real quick. Um, the big thing with an axe, be aware of your surroundings, who's around you, what's around you, overhead especially. Um, clear footing, good stance, when you're splitting or when you're chopping. Make sure that that axe is going where you want it to go. A lot of guys go out and try chopping for the first time and they've never split wood or done anything. And you know, 
there's no shame in taking some firewood that's already been cut, chainsaw, whatever, and throwing it on a stump and getting it, getting your aim down, you know? Or just take a stump itself, not even try splitting, and just make a circle on it and get control of that axe. Make sure you can hit that circle every time. Um, you know, I, I mean, I grew up doing this, so I guess it just kind of comes second nature from watching parents and grandparents and everybody do it. But, you know, you still have to have that practice to get good at it. So, anyways, I just wanted to show you the performance on this axe. This is the first time I've used it to split anything. So, we'll see how it does. This is some old, uh, I believe it's Red Elm. So, it might split good and it might not split very good at all. We'll see. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying about Red Elm? It's really red on the inside. Sometimes this stuff splits like a bear. It can get real stringy. Not really recommended for axe splitting. But if you're going to axe split, split around the outside edges. This is what I'm saying about that. See how that axe is stuck in there? That's because this stuff's really, really stringy. didn't split too bad. That's a nice axe. I put the straight haft on it just for the reason that I'm going to use it for a splitting axe. I'm not going to really use it for a chopping axe. I prefer more of a curved handle when I'm going to use it for a felling axe or for cleaning brush or something like that. But for splitting, good heavy head, nice straight handle, does the job really good. Try another piece of this old stuff. I don't know if you can see that axe is stuck in that stump, but that's why I prefer to chop on a piece of wood because otherwise that'd be right in the ground. I know you can't always do that out in the bush, but if you have access to it, use it. It'll save the edge of your axe. Well, that about does it for today. I want to get out here, get this tarp up in a different configuration, uh, play around with my axes, or my axe I should say, and my saw, and see if I did what I was supposed to do right, and I guess I did. They both seem to perform well, so I guess we'll call it the end for right now. Stay tuned for another.